It's not hard to find a good restaurant in Manhattan, but the National on Lexington Avenue has something the other places don't. Jeffrey Zakarian. You know Jeffrey Zakarian. The guy is a legend. And while Jeezy has every right to charge the top dollar for his out-of-this-world food, he instead chose to make the National a place for everyone. But we don't, we have no issues with people coming the way they are. I like that. So you can come in with the reservation, we love that. Today, we'll be sipping some of the wines from Chef Zakarian's hand-picked collection. No, this is, I'm sorry, no. I poured the wrong wine. Could I have That's two right. more glasses? Wines that'll knock off your socks without dipping into your purse. There's no reason to serve a 50 or $100 bottle of wine. And spend the money on something else. Also, we'll get a sneak peek at Zakarian's new cast iron cookware in action. This is One on Wine in New York with Jeffrey Zakarian. I scotch guarded my entire outfit so I could drink with you all day. <laughs> you are like the new American classic as far as chefing is concerned. Like you, you kind of bring the old school into modern day and that's really represented here. There's a revolving door there yeah. for a reason. Yeah. It's like people should come in here without a reservation. It's like I can come in here. We have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner here seven days a week with all types. We have people coming to the theater, going to the theater, coming back from the theater, going to work, breakfast, before work, after work, meetings for lunch. It's just like a whole diverse crowd. Uh, and that's why I put a revolving door. So it's meant to Keep it's meant to come in. Just come in. I hear that folks, if not everybody in their party is here and ready to go. They can still sit at the table. Of course, that whole absurdity. We don't even know. If you come here from party at five, and yeah. you book the reservation. Is your party here? Is the party complete? Yeah. Wait at the bar. I love no, that. just sit at the table. <laughs> what? I can't sit at my table. Yeah, I reserve. And you're gonna have a water. What about? What uh, good does that do me? You're having a water. And it's almost like I, I say this in with all due respect, but I like restaurants. It's, this, this is my restaurant. I can say it that you can default to. Yeah. It's okay to like be the third choice of someone. That's I, nice. I'm happy with that. Because See, I love that. What, what that does for me is it gives another level of people who might not have like such high expectations and then I exceed their expectations. And that's a very real thing yeah. to exceed someone's expectations. Yeah. It's hard. Zakarian's democratic approach to food culture mirrors his personality perfectly. It's classy, but it's casual. It's high end, but it's low maintenance. So you curate all the wines yes. for your restaurants, so right? So I love wines that are like, what? This is 18 bucks. Yeah. And it's it's that good. But it wouldn't have gotten a front seat because of all the other show ponies in the front. A lot or of show ponies in the front. A lot of show ponies. Pour some wine for your wife. Oh gosh, that's This is a Wolfson cellar, Zinfandel from California. Thank you. Did you see I just discarded the wine glass? Yes, I know yeah, that. Those. That was really quick. Or the water glass. See, now I'm calling everything a wine glass. Yeah. I don't um, think you really drink water, do you? No, not really. Not really. Who needs What's to the hydrate? Point? I know. Um There's water and wine, isn't there? <laughs> cheers to you. Which one is this? This is the Zinfandel Wolfson. 100% Zin, all over it. And we taste, the way we taste these wines, by the oh, way. Oh God, that's great. Is my wife and I taste these. We have a big, big table. We open everything. We put paper bags around it. We have numbers, one, two, three. And then we go from 50 or 60, our top 10. Then we go to 10, then we taste again. Mm -hmm. Then we eliminate another top 10. And then we get to like 12 or 15. All really of this like. being drunk out of a paper bag. Yes. You Sometimes I fall wife. off the chair. <laughs> with the paper bag like this, but mostly we, we hold up. Every great wine should be paired with a great dish. And on that note, I'm starving. Wow, wow. Should we make a burger? Maybe. Let's make a burger. Mary, Talk to me. welcome to my kitchen. So we have a beautiful carbon steel pan, which is sort of like stainless steel meets cast iron. A little lighter, and this is the workhorse of the kitchen. So we don't use a lot of stainless steel, we use this carbon steel. It's magical. You notice we're heating it up a bit. And we have a lamb burger here. We're gonna season your, your beef and your lamb. We're gonna put some fresh kosher salt, fresh pepper, a little bit of oil in a pan, not a lot, cause don't forget you have fat here. All right, and then we're just gonna put it like that and fat be away. We haven't touched it. But the great thing about this pan is sliding already. <laughs> Very important to cooking beef or lamb is to let it cook. Never Leave touch it, it. A lot of people press and touch. You don't want to press. Leave it alone. You want a very good sear on one side. We're going to flip it over and it's basically going to be done. Okay. We're going to do a little flip. You ready? We're just going to go like this. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to put to this 
some onions, but I'm gonna put them around. And why I put them around is because now I'm, the fat from the lamb has come out. Okay. Guess what I'm cooking it in? Lamb fat. <laughs> Lamb fat. Okay. So what you notice happening here, you see how nice and brown the onions are getting? Yeah. My burger's cooking, and my onions are frying, and they're being refried in the burger fat that's coming out. Oh, oh come on. Okay, so we have our bun that we've toasted. Okay. A little tzatziki, which is uh, cucumber, yogurt, dill, salt and pepper. And of course, some cucumbers really thinly sliced. We're gonna put the burger on the bun. That was so fast. Not a lot of time. And then we're gonna take these fat and all and put it right on top of the burger. And we're gonna put this bun on top. And that is a beautiful lamb burger. That and that's cooking right there. And anybody at home can do that, because I just did it. That was minutes. That was six minutes. Oh, that looks good. Bon appetit. We should get in there. It's time to eat. Yes, it is. Ooh. Yes. So I'm Armenian, I eat a lot of lamb, or I have. And I still do to this day. And I didn't want to do a lamb burger, but someone said, why don't you do a lamb burger? I'm like, eh, no one's gonna eat it. It's like, what? sells like crazy. I don't know. Here, cheers. This, this is, is a new, this is what you want to drink really? with that. Really? Yahara. This is 100% uh, California, 2017 Pinot Noir. Okay. And this is gonna be, I think, a great wine with lamb. Wow. This is Wednesday. Cheers. Cheers to you. Is this so, a job? Am I dreaming or is this real? Is this real life? This is what I do for a living. This is real life. What was your first job in food? My first job in food. When I was um, 14, I worked at a fast food restaurant. Did you? Yes. My second job was a bartender at El Morocco. And I loved it, but it was great. So I, I love hospitality. I love serving people. Okay. I love taking care of people. It just makes me happy. What What was the jump from bartender to chef? -like? I was an economics major. Okay. And I decided to go to Europe for like an off, you know, one of those what are they called? Abroad. Here? Gap years now, they call them. And I fell in love with Europe and the culture and the two hour lunches mm. and the food. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wow, mm. this is for me. Okay. And I came back and I went to CIA, decided to be a chef. My parents were not happy. Really? And no, because I went from an economics degree to Fair. I'm going to go and be a cook. But that's how it was in 80, 81. You, that was the way it was. It was like we were not, it was a vocation. Yeah, yeah. And a, not a very good vocation. But I was determined, I loved it. And I came to New York when I graduated in 82 and I worked at Le Cirque, which was the best restaurant in the yeah. city, for free. You worked there for free? For free. Wow. I asked for a job, I said, we don't have a job, I'll work for free. The guy said, come tomorrow. I love that. Can't do that today. How long did you do that for? Almost six months. Wow. I borrowed money. I was going to say. I borrowed money because I was blue in the face. Yeah, of course. Borrow, borrow, borrow. And I, I had the education of like, in five years, I had an education that was like a PhD, a doctorate, all wrapped up in one awesome. at that restaurant. It was the best restaurant with the best food, the best chefs. It was like, I had no idea. That's awesome. And I just, I felt it and I was like, this is for me. This is great. Mm. Thank you, Chef. A little butternut squash. Ooh, wow. With uh, pomegranates. For heaven's sake. And fresh mint. We have a lot of your product on this table. We do. Should we kind of give people yeah, a little go. taste of what so, QVC is so, like? So um, this is uh, the baking square okay, nonstick. So all this is cast iron nonstick. What does okay. that mean, people at home? You can wash this with soap and water, and you can't wash cast iron with soap and water because you have to re-season it. What does right. that mean? You have to bake it, put salt, and rub it. and You, have to, you, you can do whatever you want with this. You, the cleanup is you soap and water, wipe it out. I like that. Cast iron is one of those things that is like one of the foundations in a kitchen. It is uh, heavy and it is metal. It is iron, conducts heat really well, but it also stays hot. Okay. So these particular ones you can bring right to the table. We love cooking in these. And the reason why you're seeing them at the table like this is because we like serving in them. Because by the way, that squash is still warm. Exactly. That cake is still warm. All this is still warm because it's in cast iron and the heat just stays so great. These are adorable. Yep. I'm sorry. They, Thank I, you. They're I cute, know right? that they, yes. And this is what we use for side dishes. These are so cute. I know that there are other reasons to love cast iron. And this, this is a real but these this are so is cute. heavy. This is yeah. like almost no, a pound, a pound and a half. It's got a good weight to and it. That, it has to if it's not a, if it's not heavy, it's not cast iron. Right. There's no like faking cast iron. No, that's a good point. So we have the side dishes available. 
We have this skillet available, yes. right? Where the butternut squash is. It's all and available. The cake pan yes. that we have on the table is available. That looks like an eight by eight. Hold on. Hold on. It looks eight. like it's eight. Eight. All right. I got a little butternut squash in there, but it's okay. You know, whatever. It's fine. it's fine. It washes off. Could I use those size in my air fryer? Absolutely. Could I put them on my grill? There's no limits. There's no rules. There's no Induction? limits. Induction? Everything. Okay. Glass. All right. Outside, okay. on the grill, inside on the grill. Mm. What do we have next? We're this is Fox and the Flock. We blind tasted everything. Mm hmm. And this sold, this is probably the best seller we had. Even though it all sold out, this sold out the quickest. This is a Chardonnay, 100% Chardonnay. I believe we sold a Riesling and a Sancerre. I'm not quite sure. Let's see what else we have. We have the, oh, the, hey, the Viognier. Uh, cheers to you. Wow, so it it's good, nice. right? So it's like, really like good. melon. Yes. Mango, deep, deep, deep um, papaya. Very tropical. But when you taste it, you have this great acid that's like shocking. Yeah. Why I love this this variety. That's lovely. Well, that's really good. That's it's good. really clean too. It's great. It's clean and it satisfies. I think this is great for someone who loves a Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. But this sort of like hits all palates. Yeah, yeah. So that's this is really a terrific nice. wine. Very cold. The Viognier to me is like one of the best. That's a porch sipping wine. Porch sipping wine. Mm -hmm. Well, I live in Manhattan. I don't have a porch yet. But um, but. You can get the wine. Yes. You can get the cast iron sides, but you can search the entire collection, the Zakarian collection, on QVC.com. And I have to tell you that these are staples for everybody's kitchen. I love staples. that you did that. Yeah. You didn't bring stuff to QVC that's just a fad, throwaway kind of thing. Well, you want to drink wine. Yeah. It's also great that you can put this on revolving credit so you can keep getting different. So the auto delivery, yes. Auto delivery, you yes, want yes. that. It's like, let's have. I mean, 12 bottles of wine a month is doesn't seem excessive, does it's it? It doesn't seem crazy at all. No. Every 90 days, 12 bottles of wine? Of course. For a solid year? Yes. Sign me up. Cheers. Cheers to you, Jeffrey Zakarian. If you want the Zakarian experience, if you want these premium yet affordable wines and those amazing cast iron side dishes, that carbon steel pan, low maintenance, high-end cookware from a name you trust that you'll use forever, they can be shipped right to your doorstep. To shop all of Zakarian's collection, head on over to QVC.com, and I'm heading back to the bar with my friends. This is One on One.